Hey everyone, it's me, Justin 2.0, and I'm here to bring you another episode of Should You Get. This one is for The Elder Scrolls Online, or ESO. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at the game, how it plays, the questing, you know, the gameplay. And we're also going to be taking a look at some of the settings for PC users, how to maximize your, maybe not maximize your performance with the game, but, you know, get, take a look at some of the options it gives you, and so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, take a look at the settings here. In the video settings, you got, you know, your full screen, maximized, full screen, windowed. You get your resolution settings, and it goes all the way up to 1080p, at least for this card that I have. And if you have higher resolution monitors, um, I don't know if it goes up any higher than that. I'm not sure. You got your, your vertical sync and your anti-aliasing. I have it disabled because every time I stream, it drops my frame rate. And, uh, yeah, that happens. And also, I stream this game occasionally, so go check out my Twitch channel. It should be a link on my channel to my Twitch channel. Now you can also um, custom scale your interface size, which is like your health bar, your heads-up display. You can change the size of your health meters and all that stuff. That's good. Here's your graphics quality here. Texture quality, high, how, how high resolution your textures are. I've got it set on the highest settings. <coughs> Sorry about that. Even, even on the highest settings, though, some of the textures... It's, it follows the traditional Elder Scrolls... Um, this game, it does. It looks fantastic. It looks fantastic at a distance. It follows that Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls tradition of it looks really good. The scale is big. It's, the areas are really open and wide. And it looks really good when you're standing up on a cliff looking over everything. And it's like you see all the grass and all the animals and all that stuff. It looks fantastic. But the problem this game has, and I'll show you this later is when you get up close to some of the textures, they do start to show that they're not as good as you think they look. <clears throat> Moving on, we got the, uh, the subsample quality, the world render resolution, which is pretty, pretty nice to have. Shadow quality, the resolution in which your shadows will render out. Water reflection quality, I keep it on low because you really don't, need it running on the high or medium settings because the water looks fine on low. It looks good to me, at least. That's fine for me. Particle density, in terms of the normal number of character-based particles, character-based particles that are shown in the world at any given time. So you can choose how many particles effects you want to be able to run at the same time. Now I have, we've got ambient occlusion, bloom, depth of field, distortion, Sunlight rays, and your grass. You can turn the grass on and off. It really makes the world look kind of... See? Watch this. Bam. Bam. Takes out a lot of lot of small little details. But you also got the bloom, which, you know, when you get something that's really white, you're, it, it shows. You can tell. It's like really shiny reflections. Stuff like that. Depth of field. You can kind of see it, see it in the background where it blurs a little bit makes the background look a little bit more out of focus things in the foreground pop out more I keep it off for performance reasons I have a decent PC it is a um, I built it myself it's 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 a decent PC it's more of a higher mid-range kind of graphical setting PC I can run Battlefield 3 I can run stuff like that on decent settings distortion is um, I really distortion effects. See, yeah, I don't really. I guess like maybe smoke or something like a spell or something might cause like little waves, and it might cause objects to look distorted. I'm thinking that's what it is. I haven't really noticed it. Maybe it's because I have it turned off because to save performance. But I've got most everything else on high or medium. Now you got your audio settings here. You got your master volume. That's good. Music, you can turn that on or off, or you can just lower it. And I have it lower because I don't like the music being really loud because I'm on TeamSpeak a lot. So, I can hear my TeamSpeak people. And I like that you can adjust each individual level of volume. So, you get you know your interface volume, which is your 
your uh, that sound effect. Anytime you click something in your in interface, it makes a noise. That is your interface volume. Ambient volume, background music, all that stuff. Effects, swing, you know, sword sound effects for combat, all that stuff. Footsteps, dialogue, interface. All right. The cool thing about ESO is a uh, classic Bethesda style. They enable mods. So I've got a couple that are actually, I consider, for me, to be necessities of playing the game. Stuff that lets you set up hotkeys for switching, switching outfits, all kinds of stuff. Switching equipment. Shows you, uh, this right here just gives you a quick rundown of all the loot you picked up in your battles. All that stuff. Um, I've also got stuff that displays uh, percentages of health. And how much how much damage you're doing, and how much DPS you're putting out. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the game. I've gotten to level 38, so I'm about upper mid game, getting close to end game here. 12 levels away from end game. <coughs> so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in the world. We're gonna see all the other people. We're gonna interact. And we're gonna do some. We're gonna do a quest. See how those run. Um, there is one gripe I have about this, but it is early launch. Not really early launch. It's been out for about two two weeks now. Just about. So, some of the quests are buggy. Another classic Bethesda move. There's a lot of stuff that is just broken. And it requires them to do, like, server restarts. Every one, once a week, they do server maintenance. Every Wednesday, I do believe, between a certain amount of hours. But this is the, the world here. Um, another cool thing is you can disable the chat. You can just hit that. You don't want to see chat in your game. That's fine. And uh, there you go. Upper right-hand corner. See you up here. Up here it gives you your, uh, your goals, objectives for your quest. I've got add-on stuff up here, which is, you know, your preference. If you want that stuff, you can, you can get it. You can get add-ons. Increase your gaming experience. You know, keeps track of how much gold... It keeps a couple timers going on what you've, like, when to feed your horse, all that stuff. And your party, party system. And the thing I like about the party system in this game is once you get grouped up with people, because me and my guildmates, we like to run in our, our group so we can keep track of each other. Someone says, hey, I need help with this. We can find them easily. We all stay in the same group. Cool thing is, even when they go offline, we can all log off. We can all log back in tomorrow, and the group will still be there. We'll all still be in that group. That is cool. Unless they restart the server, everybody stays in the same group. So we stay grouped together, which is cool. So now we're going to run and uh, do a side quest, because I don't want to do anything that really spoils the main plot too much. And uh, see, so you got your, your Skyrim-style compass up there. It tells you your directions. That's pretty cool. And you got your classic Elder Scrolls combat here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fight this dude. See how the combat handles. Now the enemies give these little cues. Little things on their character tell you what they're about to do. They, you see that little, little particle effect. They're charging up an attack. Tells you to block. So I'm playing a Dragon Knight Imperial. I bought the Imperial Edition, so yeah. Um, in my opinion, maybe not really worth the purchase if you don't care to play as an Imperial. Other than that, or you can, yeah, I think if you get the Imperial Edition, you can also play as any race in any alliance. Or if you pre-ordered, you can play in any race in any alliance. And I can, I can see that being good pre-order bait, which is, it sounds bad, but at the same time, I really don't know where to uh, where to stand on that, but we're right here. We're doing the purification, the moats in the moonlight quest, and um, there are certain things in this game that they work really well, and then there are things in this game where it just feels sometimes it feels like oh, this is just a shell, an Elder Scrolls game shell. It feels Elder Scrolls ish. But then you 
see something happen or another player does something that makes that takes you out of the experience there's there's people that you know classic MMO style they jump around they act like fucking idiots and it's like I was immersed and now you've just taken me out of that experience so it really sucks sometimes so yes yeah, so use purification prayer you got a lot of these quests that do this though where they go okay we need your help and then you go off and you do three four two or three things and then you return you talk and then you go you do like a small little dungeon you fight a boss you get your reward for the quest quest is over the thing is a lot of mmos do it that way the thing is this one is fully voice acted and it's got some of that that elder scrolls humor they've got a lot of uh a lot of funny moments like a quest where you're uh going through a camp trying to prank, prank a bunch of drunken people which is pretty cool and this is another problem i have with this game right here look uh while this is up you see this right here gold spammers are everywhere in this game I'm not trying to hate on the game in any way but this is something they've got to take care of luckily and i say luckily notifications what i'm going to do is decline and i'm going to report spamming because this shit is annoying this is a cool thing this game also has is a customer support you can report players that are basically gold spammers so invites for selling gold. There we go. Report player. I'm going to change, put it as harassment. And I'm going to send it to him. And yes. And you know what? Hopefully enough players are getting a guild invites from this guy. And uh, they're just sitting back and reporting. I'm going to hit X to decline his fucking... Sorry, I try to keep this little PG-13 here. But... I'm gonna decline this guy because um, I don't. I'm not joining their buying guild for real money gig. Because I'm a smarter player than that. Now what's cool is every once in a while you get these quests that are really cool and unique, and they have a lot of really nice, cool features about them, like going into Oblivion, which is you know a huge nostalgia boner for people who played Oblivion. It's like oh Oblivion, there's the towers and there's lava and there's stuff. And, um, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully we can see what's going on here. Complete talk to her. So, apparently we have to protect her while she's purifying the shrine. We got, see, this is the thing I'm talking about, though, is these quests aren't instanced. So, you'll be fighting a boss... And see, like, just, I didn't have to protect shit. I can just sit here and let all the other players do it for me. I don't see a point in that. I honestly don't. That is bullshit. I think quests, certain quest things should be instance to you. But when you're doing quests that are already out in the open, that's understandable. But when you're doing a quest and they do this, and I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to show it to you, because I don't know where this quest is going... And she sure is taking a really long time. But anyways, when you go into a dungeon, and it's an open dungeon, I get that. But when you're doing a quest in that dungeon and you're having to fight a boss, and you're doing a quest to find this boss, and you get in there, and you got like 12 people waiting on him to spawn to complete this quest, it's retarded. I don't like that. That is retarded. And uh, apparently this enemy is glitched out. This game, it does. It has its fair share of glitches. I will not try to defend that. I will point them out and be like, look, you need to fix this. This is something that needs to be done. But, on the other hand, it is a good game. And it is, they're still in launch. They're still getting, they are patching things as it comes along. They are really working on this game. And I support that. $15 a month, they sure as hell better be. 
So, would I recommend this? Yes. But at the same time, see, I think this quest is bugged. Let's look in chat, see if they're saying anything about it. Hmm. I'm gonna unlock this person's chains here. And we're gonna experience some of the fully voice acted dialogue, might I add. Every quest fully voice acted. Thank you, Bethesda. You have stuck true to your... I thank you. If you are braving the cellars further, I would ask again for your help. On behalf of all my people. There are three villagers who died before I could learn their stories. Norvir, Fardor, and Kai. <coughs> their vessels remain in this cellar, and it is my hope that their belongings do as well. If I could hold their belongings, I could hear their stories. You are most gracious. There we go. So now we gotta find these belongings and return them to her. Like I said, a lot of fetch quests, but I can easily forgive it because I like the fact that they're not just... They're fetch quests, but it, since they're fully voice acted, it feels like you're actually doing stuff for real people and helping real people. So once you get to level 15, you can switch weapons on the fly. And that really helps for doing some pretty devastating combos here. See how I just... Take on this whole group. Because good combos. Also, consolidated loot. Everything in that area, looted. Love that. So we're going to keep hunting down these objects. And seeing how well this goes. So far, I have really not dropped below 30 frames a second. Doing stuff like this without recording. While recording, I've only dropped down below 30 frames a second every once in a while. Oh, I hope I don't die. No, don't you drink that potion. And, like Bethesda promised, the NPCs actually do work together. You'll hear them calling out orders to each other. Like, someone will say, flank, flank right, and the, like, the assassins in the group will try to flank you, and try to take you from behind or flip over you and do all these cool acrobatic moves. Healer. Ah, oh, you see that? They asked for a healer and this guy over here is healing them. So you need to take out the healers first. Whoa, and I died, because that other group noticed me. But, I have a skill that lets me revive on the spot without using a soul gem. When you die, you just revive. You either revive at the nearest way shrine, which can be all the way at the beginning of the dungeon. It's a bit punishing. It feels like, hey, I deserve that death. I need to try and do better next time. And, you actually have to think a lot of these encounters through... It's not, you know, press 1 to win or get your cycle going. It's, alright, how can I approach the situation and not get all these guys to kill me instantly? And I love it. So, that was a, you know, I'm fighting all the way through all these, oh, there's a wolf there. Hello. But there are some some things I do have about this game. It feels like some of these textures were ripped straight out of Skyrim and Oblivion. There are some textures where it feels like this was like straight out of Oblivion. I don't know if they were, but it looks, it does look like it. And I'm not saying Oblivion's textures are bad, but today's quality, they're not exactly the best. But neither was Skyrim. Unless you're playing it on PC and you're using mods. So this is uh, Thara, we search her. All right, we've got one of these things. This quest might actually take a little while. And you, you do take fall damage, that's to be expected. And there are things in the game like werewolf and stuff like that. And let's see what she has to say. Those are the items I seek. You've done my people a great service, friend. You may stay and learn the stories of these people with me if you desire. 
so I can complete the quest and sit here and see the fruits of my efforts. See what happened. Which is really cool. Let's see. Is she going to do anything? I guess not. Now's a good time to take a look at the stats and um, take a look at what does what. So, the way leveling in this game works is you build your character to support your armor instead of you building your armor to support your character. What I mean by that is normally, being a dragon knight, being a tanky, sword and board kind of guy, you're going to want to put a lot of health stuff in the health. But that's not necessarily the case. In this game, your armor actually boosts... I don't say boost your health, but you can get enchantments and stuff that does that. But your health will level up naturally. It's good. Like, that's how your character is done. So I've been putting all my points into Magicka. Because as a dragon knight, I am someone who uses... who is not a mage. But my abilities do use Magicka, so I'm going to need a lot of it. So I've been putting stuff into Magicka. And you have what's called overcharging, to where it's not necessarily a bad thing. But say if your armor is overcharged and you get like a 50% more bonus to armor and it's overcharged, you might only get 25% bonus to armor. So having too much of one thing can be bad, but it's not necessarily bad at the same time. And then you have your skill trees, which are, you know, used for leveling up your abilities, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, you've got your dragon leap, you got your ultimate abilities, you got all these little things. And, um, yeah, you've got all that. So, you got skill trees for every little aspect of the game. Yeah, you know, one handed, one handed, or, uh, two handed, one handed and shield, dual wielding, bow, destruction staff, and restoration staff. Destruction staff falls under all the elements, so, you know, you got fire, frost, and lightning. Those are all under destruction staff. And everything applies to all these things. See, like Force Shock and all that stuff. It's fucking Force Shock. Freaking Star Wars. Anyways, and World is Soul Magic. You level this up by completing your main storyline. And that's stuff like Soul Trap, Soul Shatter, Soul Summons. Soul Summons is the, the uh, ability that lets you revive without expending a Soul Gem every, once every hour. So it's basically a free revive every hour and you got your racial skills which as an imperial i chose dragon knight for a reason with sword and shield because imperials have shield affinity increases experience gained with one-handed and shield skill lines by 15 percent so my shield one-handed and shield will level up 15 percent faster i'll gain experience in that and see you got your crafting so you have all these abilities that help find crafting materials help scavenge crafting materials and help you use crafting materials. So this one, I've got it up to where I can use ebony ingots. Even though I'm not even the level... I can't actually wear ebony armor right now. I'm using dwarven metal. So, that's cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a the fast travel system real quick. And we're also going to take a look at some of the crafting so I did pick up some stuff in the in the in the in the dungeon I just did and with the quest and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit of the crafting and how it can help you improve and how how it's really important in this game because the way trading is pretty much almost non-existent unless you're willing to set up deals with other players by spamming chat like that or joining a trading guild otherwise there is really no other player trading in this game in terms of selling your stuff. You have to be in a guild with a guild store to sell your stuff to other guild members. So being a part of a large guild has benefits. And I'm getting some major frame rate drop because this is Damn. usually a place where there's a lot of people. And I'm recording at the same time. You get a lot of stuff popping in. So I'm sorry about the low frame rate. Try and stare at the ground a little. Ah. Trust me, it's not normally like this. Only when I'm recording the game. It fraps for some reason. And see, so you still got that pop in. There's still... 
and there's still stuff popping in. Oh, look at that. So, see, we got clothing. And you got your research. So what you can do is, if you have clothing that has a trait that you really like, like, say, Divines, this is... Let's see. Increases Munda Stone effects by 5%. What I can do is I can research that trait. And if I have a... The gem that corresponds to that trait, while I'm crafting cloth, cloth armor of that type, I can um, use that trait. The woodworking station is made for... That is, you know, the same thing, research, all that stuff, all well and good. But you've got, you know, improvement. What you can do is you can do this and improve something if you want. And you can also... Get that out of the way sit here and compare. It gives you a good comparison on your weapons. So there is a bow. That bow is better. I can equip that bow. The thing is if you have the Imperial Edition you can also do this. Convert to Imperial style. And then it basically changes. It doesn't change the effect of the bow. It just changes the way it looks cosmetically. But the thing, the real cool thing is when you save your loot from dungeons and stuff and you go back to town sit there and get your materials you don't necessarily have to go out in the world and find all the materials you can get it straight from that you can get it straight from the uh, stuff that you pick up so I am currently just deconstructing stuff from my materials and I don't have anything to really improve but what you can do is it's basically the same concept. You just improve stuff, make it better. And enchanting is really nice in this game because, say, you enchant something and then later on you find out, I don't really like that enchant. What you can do is you can re-enchant it without losing durability or anything. And it works great. You can just sit there and re-enchant stuff if you don't like the way it affects. Or you just want to change that suit of armor's properties and get it all set up just the way you want it well. so you can you can have an enchant it might not necessarily be the enchant you want at the moment but you can put it on there anyway and then later on when you find the enchant that you want you can enchant i'm still waiting for her to spawn there we go and the bank so i use the bank for materials but my bank pretty much stays full all the time because that's all I put in it is materials. So this has been my uh, my um, quite long-winded look at ESO. So I thank you guys for watching, um, for sticking around with me as long as you guys have. I know it's been a really long time since I've uploaded anything. And um, thanks. I'll definitely be making a lot more videos now that my internet is not DSL and we actually have decent cable internet now so thank you guys for sticking around for so long and I will see you guys on ESO and future MMOs and other games that I play.